I'm here with Pete Holmes, one of my dear friends, and I say that because In we're. Space. I feel I love that you think your idea nope. of in outer space yeah. is better than me just finishing a sentence. I didn't think you were gonna stop. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be kinda like a like a soundtrack. Like you were like, This is I'm Mike Brabiglia. Literally this is, introducing the episode. This is free ice cream. They have no idea what they're listening to. You really do look like a photocopy of a photocopy okay. of a photocopy. Okay. Of Paul Rudd okay. and somebody superimposed Matt right. Damon and sprinkled a little Hanks. Okay. Just well, a, these are all compliments if you look deep. <laughs> you also <laughs> said to me once, Mike Birbiglia looks like a cheese pizza that wished to become a real boy. Yeah, that's nice. Sorry, right, I'm a huge fan. You know, I was just doing the DC improv and I'm always like, slow down. <clears throat> Yeah, and so I do you on stage, as I've mentioned. What is the impression of me that you do in the show? Because you told me it go, it went really well in D.C. It got an applause break. What your, do you, your name. What do you do? But I say it's a story about I was sexting with my wife, and then I finished, and she was still going. It's gross, but it's what happened. And then she's still texting, and I'm like, I, sex doesn't make sense anymore. I'm on, I'm on empty. Like, I'm done. Yeah. And she's like, I'm so wet. And I'm like, gross. Oh, my God. And I, that's not even it. And then I go, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to talk about sex. At this point, I'm as sexless as Mike Birbiglia. Oh, God. And the place goes nuts. And then she goes, what would you do to my body? And I go, I don't want to oh. do anything. And then I spin around. Whoa. Oh, my God. While they're cheering. I love that that's the impression of me. I, I don't, don't want to do I don't. But, but I also mess up my hair. I go, I don't want to do <laughs> anything. <laughs> But there's a real power in it. You know I love you. I'm, I'm a huge fan, and you've inspired me so much. And honestly, watching Chappelle, Gerard, you, that's the trifecta that no, nobody else is mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, one of the, you do have something in common, which is like you understand the power – of silence and the power of going slow. Yeah. And I know we've talked about this every time we've talked, but it's like the act should look like this. And I, I've been guilty of going out trying to speed bag it. And I like yeah. I like murdering, don't get me wrong. But who says Chappelle doesn't murder? You know what I mean? Yeah. But he also takes these moments. I heard him talk about it. He was like, did you watch his Duke Ellington school yeah. speech? Remember he talked about, you know, you draw their focus on a single item. Yeah. And then you surprise them. Yeah. That's what I see him doing with the pauses. That's what I see you doing with the pauses. Thanks. Well. I watched Rathaniel and, well, you guys are doing what all the classics are doing. Like when, when Gerard opens it by saying, I mean, it might as well be you. I've been honest with you about everything <laughs> except my name. And then yeah. you drop it off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then you do the show and you go at the end. Yeah. My name's. Bigly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and everyone goes nuts. It's, it's That's... a tease. He teases the the whole arc of the show. And in someone a, in, in the, the show goes, moment. he goes, I'm being honest with you. And someone goes, except about your name. And he makes his face. And the way I interpret the face that Gerard gives him is, lady, you don't think I'm going to say it at the end? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you seriously think I'm like, I just dropped that? Yeah, Gerard, I love that special. And your special's great. Your special's fantastic. Thanks, your man. special... Falls into the category of a lot of times people need to laugh. Yeah. That's the thing that people most often ask me for recommendations when they're experiencing something where they're like, God, I just got to laugh. So like, yeah. what's like a foolproof kind of thing? Yeah. And, and your new special is that. Thanks, man. Which That's must really, make really you feel nice. good. Does it make you feel good? Well, you and I have a very um, special relationship. And one of the things that makes it special is that I think we're honest with one another. Yeah. And I've shown you specials before. And you always like them, but I could tell you really like this one. Yeah. And when I make them, it's important to have avatars. Yeah. People that you're trying to please yeah. in the balcony, in the imaginary balcony of your mind. Yeah. And you're in one of those seats Thanks. for sure. Yeah. No, I, I don't know who else is in the seats. I mean, Val, my wife. I want, I want her future, my daughter. I'd like her to think it was. We uh, all have Mulaney in our seats. But he's not there. He didn't <laughs> There's a he seat that says reserved. He, he couldn't make it. He's 20 minutes late. Even in my imagination, he's like, he's a half hour late I'm for being sorry. 20 minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
JK <laughs> John, if you see this. No, he'll, yeah, no, I think he'll, he'll see this. Taryn Killam does the best Mulaney. Is that right? He goes, um, I can't do it. <laughs> That's funny. It's like that. And I was like, oh my God, you really saw him. Like, we can all go, murder. You know right, what I mean? But right. he goes, um, that's funny. And I'm like, that's funny. Oh, that's a very good impersonation. Here's my impression of, 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 here's my impression of John just in this situation. So, uh, Pete, 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 uh, that's tell, good. tell me, uh, Pete, that's your hair, right? That's your original hair. That is so good. Okay. No, I'm good. That's so it's always, good. it's always like solving a problem. Okay. We're going to go. That's funny. The, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, orient people. So I'm here with Pete Holmes today, probably our most popular guest ever. Is that uh, real? I think so. I mean, it's the thing that people always want. They you always, do, you know, who you look like. Really, you look like a guy from the future. Yeah. And there's something going around. Why do you have to interrupt me so much? <laughs> <laughs> there's like we're eating these saying, these I'm protein can't pouches. Get through an introduction. The protein pouches are like not working on some of the population. <laughs> That's what the doctor says. I don't know why you're interrupting me so much. I'm just trying to introduce the episode. Because you reminded me of what people like about our dynamic. Okay. It's because you're always giving me a go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm giving you what? A go. What's a no go? No one can hear you on stage What's either. A you go? should know. <laughs> <laughs> people oh, really? laugh because you pause. People, you don't end a joke. You fade out. <laughs> I. I, I get the I get the note, but I then I'm like, why do ten note? times more people show up to my shows than yours? There he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there it is. is. There's the Damon <laughs> smile. Put a space helmet on him. It's the Martian. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Somebody get a fishbowl. We got a Damon. I'm with my friend Pete Holmes, <laughs> and uh, here's the here's the warning I'll give you, people. We are close friends. We talk on the phone all the time. We run jokes like we do on Working It Out all the time. Uh, we make fun of each other constantly. We still love each other. Don't worry. It, it's going to be okay. That's the warning. And he's got a great special. It's on Netflix. It's fantastic. It means it's the world. Produced by Bill Burr. Bill Burr. That's our first bit. Hey. That's our first bit. Hey, Petey. I think you should do a special on Netflix. Be my company, all things comedy. Nah, what do you think? Nah, I'm serious. You should do a special with me. Bill Burr. Dot, dot, dot. Oh my God. That's my impression of you Bill did, Burr you... singing New York, New York. Dot, 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 Hey, babe. Well, I hey, said babe, to you. you ever done? He's just like, he just thought of it. He's like, hey, babe. Nah. You ever think about doing a comedy special? And you're like, I've done like five years. He's like, nah, you should do one. I opened for Bill 20 years ago. Did you really? Yeah. my Because you're both Boston guys. Yeah, but it was my friend Dan Kaufman, who's a very funny guy, a talented artist. He would sometimes not be available. He'd get a gig and he wouldn't be available. And he'd call me or he'd call Kumail. We were open micers yeah. and would fill in when he couldn't do it. And the two times Dan Kaufman couldn't do it, Jim Gaffigan, yeah. Bill Burr. Yeah. So I like two arena comedians yeah. now. I opened for them when they were club comics. Wow. And Bill, you know, at that time was still figuring it out. I remember saying to somebody, a comic in the scene, I was like, yeah, I was just in uh, fucking Peoria opening for Bill Burr. And the guy went, Billy Burr? <laughs> he originally was called Billy. But they couldn't believe that he was headlining. Oh, That's how long ago he was. Because he was such a young was. kid at the time. And yeah. he was a club guy. You know, he's doing 20 at the cellar, and they're like, he's going out? Billy Burr? My, not, not dismissive, but kind yeah. of like, really? My great mistake with Bill a million years that ago, and I've since apologized to him about this, is when I met him, he had such a baby face that I thought we were the same age. That's a nice thing. Because he's say. got about 10 years on me. Right, but then it didn't lead to good stuff because I was like, hey, we should do shows together. Oh. Like we were peers and we weren't peers. Well. And it was, and it, ne it look never. Look for the love. I say look for the love. 
No, I just I did Corolla's podcast and he's kind of shitting on things and saying things that might be hard to agree with. Just look for the love. There's some love in there. You go, I know you're making this joke about this and this, but it's because you care. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't, if you feel uncomfortable, just look look for the love. And I, I see you saying something nice to Bill. Like you, I thought we were young and spry. That's what I thought. But he called, so I called him 20 years later. We went and saw The Ring together. Okay. The Ring. Yeah, remember I remember that one. Ring? The VCR makes, makes you freeze or something. Yeah, it was just he and I in the theater, courtesy seat between us. And then... Uh, <laughs> courtesy seat between courtesy us. Courtesy seat between us. <laughs> okay. Uh, very on brand. And then all these years later to have him produce my special. So I called him. I didn't know how involved he was, being real. Yeah. He's got a company. And Big I company, know. yeah. And then I called and I was just like, you know, I'm a mushy guy and I like being grateful. It's a, it's a good feeling for me. And I'm like, hey, it just means a lot to have you. Because he kind of walked me into Netflix. Yeah. It's hard, you know. It's hard to get Netflix special. That's what I'm saying. It's yeah, hard yeah. out there. It's very hard. And he was kind of like, nah, I'll vouch for you. You know, he waved oh, me into really the nice. club. Wow. So I called him and I, I left him a big mushy message. And it's Bill Burr, you know. But then he called me back and he, he I didn't answer. I couldn't answer or whatever. I didn't see it. And he left me like a real sweet, like, I'm embarrassing myself. But he was like, you know, it's fun listening to Bill be sincere. Yeah. Because then he immediately will start roasting himself. Yeah. Because he's like, ah. You don't have to thank me. He pushes away. You don't have to thank me. He goes, you know, give it to the cream of the crop. And that's where you are. And there you go. There's your mushy message from soft heart Bill. Go fuck yourself. And like hangs up. You know what I mean? It's just like it, the persona comes in to like chase him away. Ah, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> but uh, you, it meant a lot. Yeah. And then you know what else was really special about it was it got interrupted by the lockdown, which I don't want to make light of that. So many people and the loss of that. But from my perspective, I was about to film my special. Lockdown happened. Yeah. And then two more years. So this like was like barrel aged. And you and I like we watch younger kids specials. And, and a lot of times I can, I can enjoy them and simultaneously be like. They should have done more reps, you know, just just more reps. Yeah, just perform like, more times. Out of love. Try out the jokes more times. Out of, yes. Again, find the love. I'm not giving you shit. I'm saying like, look, we all think it's ready. Maybe hit pause. You're good at that. Chris, and I've talked to Chris Rock about it recently. It's like that's the generational thing right now, which is the younger generation, they do less repetitions of the same material to hone that material. I don't know if it's a generalization. It's something that it seems to be happening. It's not really Maybe. their fault either. They're in an instant economy. Yes. And social Film media. Film it, put it out, it gets 10 million views. So. so I had all this time to ferment it. So when I watch it, I can even tell you a line. I do this joke about uh, during the lockdown, I knew I was in trouble. I was getting soft because I went back to eating Dorito Doritos which I hadn't had in a long time. And I go, I forgot there's a charge to a Cool Ranch Dorito. You put it on your tongue, it's like licking a nine volt battery. This is all standard fare. These are just jokes. There's a charge. You're like, and your brain is so confused. There's so many ingredients. You're like, is this sex? And your brain doesn't know. <laughs> That's all a joke. That's like not a lot of reps to get to that. Yeah. The line that took hundreds of doing times and you get bored with the joke and you want to entertain yourself and you see there's just a little room like, a, like making a cake. I think I could inject just a little bit of frosting in that bite. And you go, so I'm sitting on my couch eating a big bag of battery sex chips. That's, <laughs> that's the line. And battery that's, sex chips. And that becomes, people text me, battery sex chips. Battery sex chips. It becomes like pull quote. I love it. And those, and you and I know, two old farts, we know, Gary Gullman knows. Those are the reps. Yeah. You're bored. Well, You're desperate. Let's take that apart. Let's take that apart. Battery sex chips. Why is it funnier than the original joke? I think the reason it's funnier is that is that it's the joke inside the joke. So it's you have the joke and it's like, oh, okay. It's like we're in it's this. like a battery, it's like sex, but then you pay it off, yeah? And then yeah, and so you say the first joke and we're like, oh, okay, we're all in the same we're all living in the same house. We're all roommates. Right. That's the first part of the joke. Second part of the joke is we're roommates. And remember that funny thing that happened like a half hour ago? And what that's what you do with friends. And that's what you do with friends. And that's what stand-up comedy is, I think, at its best. When it's working great. I have a lot of feelings about this. Yeah. They're, bad comedy is they're listening to you. You're like an oligarch. Good comedy is we're listening to each other. Yeah, we're listening to each other. I do a joke now 
I was just at the DC Improv hot room. You try a new joke, it doesn't work. You go, you guys just cut that from the next special. Yeah, I always say I, that. Thank you. I always say and that. And I go, when you watch this and this joke isn't in there, you can be like, I did that. Some, some, and they love it. Sometimes I'll say, this is the funeral of that joke. That's great. This, I won't steal that. I'm tempted to. This is the funeral the of that joke. The only compliment I want to borrow that. <laughs> I want to have that joke. But it's so healthy. At the beginning, you're 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 like a fortress. You yeah. know what I mean. And as a, as you soften and get more comfortable up there, you really realize like this is you're you're informing this so much. You're telling me. Oh yeah. What what's what's me even? Yeah. Sometimes they're like you get a frequency that they're like. I don't think that's you. And you're like, so I forgot myself for a second. No, it's you're like absolutely a, right. It's like a good friend, a good crowd. A bad crowd, you're like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. But a good crowd, if they don't like something, you're like, uh-oh. Well, that was like a famous thing that Seinfeld said in an <gasps> interview once. <gasps> My voice is shot. Was, <gasps> that, was that an impression? Mike! What's, what's the deal? Who is that? It's me. Who? Jerry! Who, Jerry who? Jerry, comedy legend. Chappelle says he's the goat. I'm the goat. Billy goat's gruff. Gruff, gruff voice, sore throat. <laughs> Get that goat some NyQuil, DayQuil, vapor rub. <laughs> Your mom rubs it on you. This vapor. is awful. This is making stuff. Do we really need to drop this the R on stop. vapor to make it shorter <laughs> for vapor rub? How about vapor rub, this is Vicks? horrible. That's very good. <laughs> Send it to sign. Send it to him. Oh, God. Voicemail. Is it really in an envelope? Am I opening up my voicemail? You just shorten Seinfeld to sign? Nobody's ever Send called it to him a that. Sign. Oh, his father's sign business was called Seinfeld Sign Co. So don't fuck with a fan. <laughs> Did you? You were trying to, to keep your liver from collapsing. Like you, you really to, look like you're on life support. You used to do. You look like you live on a planet where there's no sun. <laughs> Like we found you just in time. Get this guy some vitamin D. Have you ever gone on a stroll? <laughs> like like for a walk? Yeah, just like a that's what we call it, stroll. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you might not know the words. <laughs> um The outdoors is free. They're, they don't to, swipe a card or you anything. You used to do a Seinfeld thing on your talk show on TBS. Yes. And what was it? did Seinfeld like it? Um, I actually met him and he came up to me. The dream of dreams. And he goes, oh, I saw that, I saw that new material Seinfeld thing you did. It's great. And he walked away. Uh, but it was a great meeting. A couple months later, we're shooting Crashing. I'm in um, Washington Square Park. I can't go through Washington Square Park without thinking about this. I get a phone call from Ted Sarandos. Okay. Guy CEO owns of Netflix, Netflix. Created Netflix. So I just get a fucking, this is not my normal day to day. Yeah. We have Mr. Sarandos for you. I'm yes. Like, I'll accept. Yeah, sure. like a collect. I'll call. accept the charges. I'll yes, accept. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, I steal the password, but I'll, I'll pay for the call. <laughs> J.K. Ted, I pay. I pay. Daddy's funding the whole family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Ted, who I had met a couple times, is on the phone, and he's like, "Jerry and I had dinner the other night. We're doing comedians in cars. He loves new material. Seinfeld. We were thinking maybe we could have dinner." Me, you, and Seinfeld. Now, you'll never meet a bigger Seinfeld fan. Yeah. Except maybe Ryan Hamilton, who's slowly turning into... <laughs> <laughs> See, I give it out to everybody. And I'm like, I'm in New York. And he was like, oh, uh, well, hit, hit me up when you're uh, in LA, and we'll try and make it happen. And I was like, okay. And he was like, here's my email. Yeah. Ted at... <laughs> I'm just oh kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Buddy, never happened. Never happened. I get back to LA. Of course, the first email I send. Hey, Ted. Oh, remember when you said my dreams could come true? Right. Just the dinner. I don't care if we do it. Yeah. I just want to be at a fucking <clears throat> white tablecloth with Seinfeld and just kind of. Yeah. So the mistake. This waiter the seems like error, he's, the he's impatient. Impatient the, waiter. The tactical error. <laughs> I think the tactical error you made is that you should have just gone like, I'm going to be there next week. No, the tactical error, I, I'm with you. Because I replay this like a yeah. like the one that got away. I, I was shooting Crashing. I'd be like, I'll fly out Saturday. Yeah. We'll have dinner Saturday. I'll fly back Sunday. I would have hated it. And it was probably an act yeah. of self-love that I didn't offer that. 
I had that with Gaffigan when I was in college. I went to the alumni house at Georgetown. I looked up comedian. There was a one result. It was 1997. It was Jim Gaffigan. Only comedian from Georgetown, like, ever. Wow. And uh, I said, I called him on his landline. Hello? <laughs> oh, I don't like that. <laughs> Is Jim there? He's looking for Jim. <laughs> First gaff try. Hello? 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 You know what I used to... Because I, I opened for him, I was like, I like Jim because you can picture him in any situation. Yeah. And I realized, I was like, you can't picture me in a lot of situations. And I was like, Jim in a strip club would be like, oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it would be funny. I don't mean like he's genuinely into it, but like he could do an act out like, here's me at a strip club. Oh, God. Like, it's funny. Right. Whereas I, at that point, didn't have a persona... That could go in a saloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what sure. I mean? I was like, I got to branch out. I can picture this guy anywhere. Go so on. I called. I called Jim Gaffigan's landline, and uh, and I'm and he's like, well, if you're ever in town in New York, you know, I'll, I'll take you to lunch, talk about comedy. I'm like, I'll be there next week. You took, did it. Took the bus. Yeah, you did it. Stayed at my sister's. So couch. you did it right. Yeah, you did it right. I, I just said, one. I'll be there next week, and it was a f- total lie. Two Gaffigan stories. Remember, I was opening for him in the Midwest. Then I moved to New York, probably in part thinking like, I know Bill Burr, I know Jim Gaffigan, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> he calls me. It's like the first week I'm in Brooklyn. And I'm like, what the fuck? And it's to open for him. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. And he's like, are you still in Chicago? And I'm like, no, I, I just moved to New York. Yeah. I say it like, it's good news. And he's like, oh. Because he needed a local guy. Right, he he doesn't want to fly guy. me right. out. And put you up. That's the point. Yeah. In Jim's phone. I know this because he emails me and it'll still say, watch Midwest. out those notes you put in those email addresses because yeah. sometimes they show up. It says, Pete Holmes, comedian Chicago worked with. Yeah. That's what it says. Worked with. So then I moved to New York. I finally see Jim at the improv, the old improv. And I lived in Park Slope at the time. And I took the train with him after the show. Just like a like a burr on his sock, belt burr on his sock. Okay. And it was, I forget it was like a train that I had to transfer, right? And we're on the train, and we got to my stop. This is where I have to get off. But he's giving me advice. Yeah. And I stayed on the train. Oh. Isn't that ro- that's New York romance? Yeah, I love that. And you know what he told me? He probably told you the same thing. He said, "Be undeniable." Yeah, it's true. And he goes, they're not going to pay attention to you until they have to pay attention to you. So all my comedy notebooks, I wrote Be Undeniable at the top. And the that was page. originally a, that's a, that's a Steve, Steve Martin. That's a Steve Martin piece of advice from not, his book, Born Standing Up. I'm not trying to take it away from Steve, but I bet fucking Mark Twain said it too. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's just good advice. It It's humility. It's like, you know what I tell comics? I go, <clears> you like, just said, I said you just to, said Steve. You just said Steve as though that you know him. I don't. But um, I just want to make sure the you listeners know. know. That you I do. Know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just want to make sure the listeners know that, that you I don't, don't, know him. don't know him. Yeah, I don't know him. So just, if you could just apologize yeah, yeah, yeah. into that camera. You know, while you're stroking your ego in every frame of this podcast, why not fr- frame a photo of you guys? Is there a shot in this studio uh, that doesn't say, don't forget I'm important? Oh, my God. Don't forget I matter. Just write I matter on a post-it and put it in between all these posters. <laughs> I matter. Just say I'm important. I matter. I'm here. He's one of those I wouldn't want to meet him. You would, though. He's. Yeah. I'm not saying I think he'd disappoint me. But what am I going to say? No, I know. Gonna I feel blubber. that way. I'm going to blubber. It's like me and Seinfeld. I, I, I can't handle it. I had that with... Jimmy Kimmel was nice enough when I was on a show recently to take me out to dinner with Martin Short, who I'd never met. Mm. And I had that thing where it's like I look up to him so much that I'm uh, every every word I'm saying is echoing in my brain in circles. Like, yeah. is that okay? Is that I just said a thing? Is that okay? Is what that okay? This is why he only hangs out with Steve Martin. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's the only only friendships in the building. Uh, <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> it's like you can't you can't talk to me. I opened for Martin Short. It was a big deal. And I was so excited. And buddy, talk about vulnerability. When my agent was like, do you want to open for Martin Short outside of San Francisco? I was like, of course I do. Three Amigos, all that stuff. I was thrilled. I get there. I On the flight there, I'm basically picturing us on a tandem bicycle. Yeah. 
like in the fall kermit laughing. with kermit yeah, the yeah, frog yeah. etc and, and we're still not sure how they did it <laughs> but i you know i went in as enormous ornate dressing room yeah just because of the venue it's not like he insists on that and i said hello and he was getting ready for the show he wasn't yeah. mean he was just like hello. right right and then i was like and then i ate shit because martin short draws a little bit older than old Petey. yeah I did my best. I saw all these jazzy night out jackets yeah. on like women in their 60s. I eat shit. And then he goes on stage and starts murdering. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm standing huh. in the wings, sad. Yeah. We're not friends. I did badly. Yeah. He probably didn't even watch. Now he's murdering. Oh, and I look to my left and there's the Jiminy Glick outfit just on a table. <laughs> just a mm, Glick yeah. mask. And I look at this lifeless Jiminy Glick, and I just left. I was so sad. Yeah. That's comedy. Yeah, I, I've had that a handful of times where I opened once when I was starting out for, for Dennis Miller. And it was just like, he came in. I, I don't even think I met him. They told me the introduction. I did my set. He walked off stage and went straight into a car and was gone. I didn't meet him. Yeah. I opened for him in a symphony hall in Baltimore, and we didn't say hello. Yeah. You don't say hello to me. What am I, Alexander <laughs> Graham Bell? <laughs> what, are you going to pick up a phone and touch someone? I can't help you. What is this, the Sith Lord Darth Vader trying to talk to the Emperor? <laughs> Sorry, I'm busy destroying a planet, oh kiddo. Oh, God. <laughs> It was good. That yeah, was the first try. Good Dennis Miller. Sometimes the first try is the best try. Then you try and get back there. We call that chasing the dragon. <laughs> this is my... This, I don't have a Martin short, but I'll... Oh, hello. I was going to go. So what do you do? So what exactly do you do? <laughs> He's so debonair. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And I watch Only Murders. I'm watching the new season, which you're in. You get killed. You're Paul Rudd. I'm not. I'm not. You you are. I'm Paul Rudd, right? Your Ant Man's before picture. <laughs> God, You're the picture Paul Rudd tapes to his treadmill. <laughs> oh God! To keep going. So cruel. We're friends. So, no, but We're friends. So, I, but that crosses Why? the line. I agree. Why do you look like old timey sped up, like time corrected footage from the turn of the century? <laughs> Like, I feel like if you walk through an old mansion, people would just be like, I saw a ghost. Like, I'm definitely sure. <laughs> like, you're looking a little washed out. <laughs> Pete, how People did, watching this on Instagram, did... this is not in black and white. This is Mike in color. <laughs> <clears throat> um, you can cut some of these out. No, I like these. It's your show. No, I like all these. These are good burns. I think burns among friends are one of the sweetest things that you can possibly do. Subtitles on, I'm saying I love you. Yeah. It's not a joke. I think everything is an excuse to love. Yeah. Seriously and sincerely. That's one of the great secrets of the universe. It's an excuse. I'm going to I'm going to ask you a couple of questions that the the working out staff had. Um that were um, you recently called into the podcast? That was the Gary Simons episode, and it was. I actually am really proud of that episode because Gary and I and and Mabel and Joe and Peter work on the podcast. We're like, let's do an episode where it's just from a perspective of Gary moved to New York a couple of years ago to become a comic. I've been a comic here for twenty something years. What if he asks all the questions that that are the I'd burning like that are that. the burning questions yeah, right i bet i could you happen to call me yeah. <laughs> in the middle of it we put you on speaker and so you you gave some advice you offered the following advice it was uh, ask yourself when you're writing a joke would you laugh yeah when you're trying to figure out what's funny or or not it's the that's the hardest one would you laugh would you laugh sometimes i think about how much we get floated on fake laughs socially but also in a club they're happy you're there. They know what you want, and they give it to you. They float you. It's like yeah. a loan. Yeah. I'll give you a little. <laughs> we need it. But, can like, you, it's hard. Can you think of a joke where, where you, it didn't pass that test for you? Well, most of my early material. Oh, really? Yeah, in the first couple of years. I had, a, I had a joke. You'll hear the Seinfeld. I go, I was looking at an ice pack the other day, and it said on the ice pack, this is true. I don't lie in the setup. 
It goes, <laughs> a bittering agent has been added to the contents of this ice pack to discourage consumption. I love that because apparently before the ice packs were too delicious. Mm. It's fine. Yeah. You hear the Seinfeld. You hear the Gullman. Right. In fact, if Gary did it, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't laugh, but there's, there's a couple things going on. Is it funny? Yeah. And is it you? Right. Well, no, it's People funny you should say that because be you, you go, you could be Gullman. I somehow believe that Gullman is thinking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't somehow believe you're thinking about that. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and there's certain things, there's certain flailing, ener- like me talking about that we're in outer space and having existential crises. That's, that's more my lane. I'm very happy to take that well, lane. Judd Apatow said to me, what this is, weekend, what, 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 what are the things I said? I just called Mike and I said, Mike, oh. do you want to do you want to talk over pizza? Oh my god! Maybe Maude could come. Oh my god! Do you want Maude to come? Maybe maybe <laughs> maybe Mod and I could come and we we'll go down and get these mozzarella sticks. This is a good take. I mean, it's basically, <laughs> you've become Sandler. Well, you know, because they're friends, there's yeah. just a sprinkle of sand. And they were roommates starting out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so anyway, Apatow said to me at the cellar, because he was giving me, he was watching my sets and giving some tag ideas and stuff like that. And he goes, uh, you, he goes, it's apropos to what we're talking about right Apatow now. Apatow to what we're talking about? Apropos, <laughs> apropos to what we're talking about. Apatow. The, uh, he goes, nobody can do your jokes. That's the best compliment. It was just a great compliment. That's the finest. That's here's the only two compliments. No one could do that but you, or I'm jealous of that bit. Those I'm jealous are the of that only bit. Those are the compliments. two compliments in comedy. You can keep that was funny. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't need that. You're right. I want you to say, fuck you. I wish I thought of that. That, but only you could do it. So you only get both. You could do it. I could have thought of it and it wouldn't have worked. That's yeah. the best. That's the best. Yeah. Um, we did a, we, on your special, you do a joke. <laughs> that and that was you and I working it out on the podcast. Oh, facts. The one where you're talking on the phone and you're out of breath. Oh yeah. the The way I found out I was gaining weight during the pandemic was I played someone a video that I had shot of my wife and daughter, and I could hear myself breathing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not in the video. I added a line mm. after the special, or but I go. But apparently, the exertion of holding up a camera phone was a little too much for me. <laughs> I'm like, <sighs> And that's a hundred percent real. Yeah, the the shame of like you're like look at this and it's like <gasps> I'm like where did I shoot this leering in the bushes? <laughs> and then I like this line too. I go they're on level ground. How am I the o- only one going uphill in this footage? That's I think that's what I tagged it with. Is that right? Yeah, that's very good. I'm walking uphill. You're in the special. The things. leering in the bushes line. I, I just want to break this apart because this is a show about jokes and. Uh, material and and sort of like what the purpose of a setup, a punchline, a tag, and a tag is in a in a typical joke structure. Setup is a thing we all agree is true. We're all on the same page. All right, that's true. You know, uh, the punchline is where it turns and we don't see the thing coming. The tag is where we're in the universe of the joke, and now here's some embellishments the, or exaggerations. You're the pinball, and you're going ding, 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 ding. You're already in the meat of the of the machine. But what's fun about tags is that the leering in the bushes is a tag in yeah. your joke structure, and it's actually the part that I laugh at. Sometimes I laugh at the setup. Sometimes the setup's enough, and I go, ah, that's love that. Like it's an observation about something and it's enough. Sometimes it's the punchline. Sometimes it is the tags. Sometimes it is the tags that make you realize you loved the joke in the yeah, first place, right. but you weren't fully on board. You have opened up a vault of my passion is Matt McCarthy, who's hilarious. He tours with me. Yeah. And I'm always saying, we were just talking about this. I was like, I'm a big <clears throat> act out guy. I'm like, do do the sound. Yeah, yeah. Do the sound. So people don't know. People always say, stand up, say, and act out. Is where you act out what it is the joke is that you're doing so as to bring people into the universe of it. Do the sound, do the action. It's like you're processing and you're saying a joke for the 300th time. They're hearing it for the first time. And they need those little rest stops to pull off and actually realize that they like it. And they also yeah. want to know it's safe to laugh now. Yeah. I'm not going to miss something. He's just going, ah! Ah! and that, it's, it's like this wonderful little p- 
pocket yeah. where they can laugh and, and not worry about missing the next line. Yeah. But I, that, think, that, I think weirdly it's like, it's also a, a little hint of vulnerability Yeah. about yourself. Sometimes the act outs reveal something about yourself. It's like I act out doing the scrambler and we're watching a grown man act out being a an amusement park ride yeah and it's embarrassing my the one that i just did <laughs> is i tell a story about choking in a corn maze yes and then i get on the outside and i have to hock up what i'm eating like yeah. a seagull ate a bad clam <laughs> and that's all funny but you, you really nailed it it's like sometimes the tag is what makes you realize you liked it in the first place. you liked it in the first place. you just needed a little moment yeah. to go like oh, he is saying what i thought he was saying yeah I think what what I love so much about this special is that you have so many set up punchline tag tag tags and you have so many jokes where we're just all friends in the audience and laughing together at yeah. this these completely absurd jokes it's just that are a kind of nonsense yeah for sure but they're the right kind of nonsense. High end nonsense. High end nonsense. You want some of that premium nonsense. Yeah, you want some you want some high ex, you want some expensive nonsense. Well, I feel sharper image. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very strongly about this is you don't you think you come to the show to hear the new jokes. Yeah. But it's an excuse to come into a space. Mm -hmm. It's way more spatial than you think. Yeah. And the things, the moments that people point out to my to me about my special that mean a lot are these in-between moments. There's yeah. a moment where I say, somebody laughs late and I go, and I'm sorry, and I go, oh, I hear you. I see you. <laughs> You're yes. valuable. I love you that. Matter. I love that. And I'm like, that's actually what it is. It's an invitation to come into a frequency yeah. wherein all of the jokes fit. But like, I don't think you remember... I don't think it's about remembering. No, it's not about remembering. I think it's about easing into a safe place. I'm not saying it's not no, cheeky or exciting. No, I'm glad it's not exciting. about remembering because I don't remember any of your jokes. You know what, I'm what you should have said was nothing. I think I burned. I think I just made all of your burns of me null and void with that burn. I totally get what you mean. I can't remember any of your jokes. It's very good. I liked it a lot. But yeah, it's a space. It's an excuse to hang out. And an audience and a performer, you can do it at them or you can do it with them. Yeah. And you and I'm not the only one that does this, but the ones that I like are the ones that are going like, I'm porous. I'm letting you in. Yeah. It's a risk. Yeah. It's dangerous. Sometimes I do a show and I let them in and I go back to the hotel <clears throat> and I feel like they, they took something yeah, from Yeah, took me. something. I do these stories about parenting fails, basically. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't work and I go... I literally just, I don't stop the show, but I go, I think this is what stand up is for. I think this is what the art form is for. I go, I could tell you stories where I'm winning or I get the last laugh. I go, what good is that to you? Yeah. Project your shame onto me and laugh at it. Oh, I love that. That's what we're doing. We're doing Project shadow work. On that episode with Gary Simons, you said, <laughs> tell your secrets. I want to see comedians uh, telling their secrets on stage. And you and I talk about this all you the time. You told me that. Yeah, something we talk about. If you're not telling secrets, who cares? Who cares? And that's right. That's kind of what I was just saying. Do you have anything in your new hour that you're touring <laughs> with right now that feels like a secret? Yeah, for sure. It's all stuff about my parents. Oh, interesting. I have a line in my act right now that's hard every single time I say it. Yeah. And I go, it's about, it's not that I want to tell my daughter that she has it better than me. <laughs> I already like it. That's a that's a great example of I like the setup. Yeah, I'm laughing at the setup, buddy. You and I are in the setup section yeah, of the stand up it. shop. Love you know it. what I mean? Like a good. And I just go, but I do sometimes wish that like a Charles Dickens style ghost <laughs> would uh, <laughs> would occasionally <laughs> whisk her to my childhood in the 80s. Oh my God. So I recently apologized to my daughter because she was choking me. She was riding my back and then she put her, her arms around my neck and she let go and she was choking me. Yeah. And I was like, baby, you got to let go. You got to let go. And then she got down and she was sad. Yeah. And I literally and sincerely apologized mm. to her for not letting her choke me. 
I said, you really wanted to choke down. <laughs> yeah, you're having, you're having big, that's a disappointment. You oh. liked choking dad. And, oh, you had God. To stop. and I said it and I meant it. And I was like, I'm sorry, baby. I'm a person you can't choke me. But I meant it. Right. And it's moments like that, that I wish a portal would open and a ghost would come in and go, come child. I'll take you to a moment in Peter's childhood when his father apologized to him. And they go in and it's just perfect darkness. Yeah. And my daughter goes, but spirit, nothing is here. And I go, that's right. Because it's never fucking happened. Mm. That's all safe. That's not really a secret. The tag is, Mikey. I go, every time I've wanted my dad to apologize for hurting my feelings, I end up apologizing to him for having hurt feelings. That's (sighs) That's a secret. That's deep. And then you know what the tag to the tag is? I know that's not funny. I just don't want you to feel alone. Oh, <laughs> that's beautiful. They laugh at that. It that is beautiful. <clears throat> makes me want to choke up. Because it's fucking hard. Yeah, it's hard. And a person in an alpha position under lights and being celebrated and saying, it hurts out there. Yeah. And you know what the best thing is? Listen, listen. To how many people laughed at that? How many people clapped at that? Yeah. But then I'm going to go one turn further, not to fluff my own pillow here, but I'm going to go it and I'm going to say, my dad doesn't apologize to me. I'll, yeah. I'll end up saying, you're right, sir. I shouldn't have. My Oh, God, I could cry. Yeah, it's emotional. It's hard. But what do you do? We're all, you know, there was an earthquake in Ojai recently. And then the same day, Val and I went and saw a production of Shrek the Musical yeah. at the local theater. And every once in a while, there'd be an aftershock in the lights. We're all under lights. Yeah. And I was like, this is crazy. That's life. We're all putting on a play during an earthquake. Yeah. And the best thing we can do is hold hands and go, I felt that shock too. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. We're dancing in a burning house. (laughs) I was working on a joke the other night, and I just had, it's a perfect example of the setup just makes me laugh. But I don't know what the joke is yet, but maybe you'll have the joke. I can't wait. It's just like, I I feel like I spend so much of my time now with just like other dads. (laughs) And just, I'm just thinking these people are losers. (laughs) And then I, and then I just start to get self-conscious. Then I go, no, I'm pretty cool. That's great. And it, and, and what I can't figure out quite yet is the joke of course is, I am that person. I am one of those losers, and I and I know it. Yeah. But I somehow can't quite convey to the audience yet that I know that they know that I know. Yeah. And that therein lies the challenge of the joke. But you laughed at the setup, and the audience is laughing at the setup. Yeah. They think it's funny. Look at these losers. These losers. <laughs> I think what Maybe I would tag it with is... Maybe it doesn't need a joke. Maybe it doesn't need a punchline. Maybe you just it's move not on. This. And then I look down and continue doing my Sudoku. Oh, that's you know nice. What I mean? Something that's dorking. nice, right. Then I finish Wordle. And yeah. I look down and finish my bubblegum yeah, ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something dumb. Yeah. But it doesn't need it. See, this is great. The tag is just an excuse for them to catch up and realize that. To catch that up to the, that that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The reason I bring up that joke is that's a secret. That's a secret thought that I have yeah. when I'm with the other dads. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to say this. To, they, they're real people. They're going to see this eventually. Mikey. But it's like, who cares? First, who cares is great. Who cares? who cares is the first layer. The second layer is I go back to my hotel room after the show and I do jokes about my parents. And my parents are, you know, loaded. They can really affect me. Of course. So it's risky. Yeah. And sometimes I go back to my hotel. Five shows in a weekend, you yeah. go back to your hotel and you feel like a hollow person. Yeah. Like you just left it all and, and, you, and, and you can't find yourself. And you get the, that voice like, what are you doing? Why are you making fun of your parents? Yeah. And I always, it's not perfect, but you know, B.B. King said, I do the shows for free. They pay me to travel. Yes. I do the shows for free. They pay me for the vulnerability hangover. And that is a good sign. Do you think Gerard Carmichael felt fantastic after he did Rathaniel? No. (laughs) No. And what a fucking gift it is. Yeah, it is a gift. And you, when you do all your shows, I'm not just saying that. I think that special is a gift. It is. It's a work of art. That's an example of someone who, and if people haven't seen Roth Annual, uh, I don't want to, it's spoiler alert, anything you read about it, he comes out of the closet in the special. 20 minutes in. Yeah. And it is a gift because he doesn't have to do that. Nope. It only has ramifications on his life that are complicated with his mom, 
You have people who he's close to, and that's challenging. Those are real challenges, and he gives it to the audience. That's the risk, and that's what you're trying to model. I'm trying to model to them. I say in my act, I'm scared of my dad. Yeah. And then I also say some truth. Yeah. And hopefully, not consciously, but somewhere in there, they're going, we can be scared and do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of the whole thing. It's funny. I had a joke. I have told the first part of this on the podcast before, but not the second, which is, uh, which is that in every marriage, ideally, you have someone who understands heat and electricity and plumbing. Uh -huh. We don't have that. <laughs> So we're currently seeking a third for our thruple. That's great. Uh, because we need a husband. That's very funny. That was Yeah, that was Rami's tag on the podcast. And now I'm doing it. We need a husband. It's a good example of like, it's Rami Youssef coming on the pod, tagging that, yeah. me going to the cellar, trying it. And like, well, that's the best part. We need a husband. We need a husband. And so, and so then the new part um, this week is, um, we would even join a cult. You know, sometimes it takes a village. Sometimes it takes a cult. What do we have to have sex with leader sometimes? That's fine. Sometimes I call Jen leader. I think that's great. Put it a, I go, the hardest part about it is having sex with leaders, finding time on the calendar. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to leader. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody has to be home when the plumber shows up. <laughs> that's nice. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's good. I was in the area of a contractor. It's like, so we have a third. And he says he's going to be there Sunday between 11 and 8 p.m. Oh, that's nice. I don't know. I just worked with a contractor. Oh, that's really nice. It's one of, it's one of the few remaining areas where you're like, it's totally fine for them to be five hours late. <laughs> it's like a, It sounds like an 80s premise. And then I go out for a coffee. That's when they show up. Yeah. Can you open the gate? I'm like, <laughs> I'll be there in 10 minutes. Can you open the gate? Yeah. Why just, are you so afraid of the world, Pete? I had to brag I have a gate. I had I did have one burn for you on the way over that I thought of, which is um, what does it feel like to have been so ahead of the podcast revolution, but still not have it catch on? <laughs> to have such a head start and to still come in seven hundred and thirty-two. <laughs> I watch fucking Jason Bateman <laughs> laughing me. Conan is laughing all the way to the charts. This is um. This is, the, this is called the slow round. Uh, what's a song that makes you cry? Well, nobody else sh will be there by the national. That's you too. It's a gorgeous song. I know. Time to move on makes Time me... to move on, Tom Petty. Yeah. Um, Ultralight Beam by Kanye West. I know. But that song is very overwhelming to me. Yeah. That sounds like somebody wrote it in a manic close to... Yeah. Close to God place. Yeah. Did your life go the way you expected it to go? Almost entirely. <laughs> for real? Yeah. Except for my divorce. I didn't see that coming. Yeah. But now looking back, I'm like, you had to. It's like, you know, a seed has to crack. That's what Jesus says. A seed has to crack to grow into a tree. Does Jesus still say that? He says it to me when I listen to Ultralight Beam. <laughs> <laughs> No, but Leonard Cohen says the cracks are what let the light in. So I didn't know, but there, yeah. there's this nasty fermentation that's necessary if you want to, you know, become the what you need to be. You you have so much of wisdom uh, circulating in your head. When I was in London, I was feeling depressed because I was away from Jenny and Una. It was so hard. These are some of my favorite moments of life. Yeah. And not that you're sad, but when I talk to you through some of those things, I'm talking to myself. Yeah. You know, you you sent me to uh, the Eckhart Tolle book, The Power of Now, yeah. which is really, really extraordinarily helpful. It's a play in an earthquake. And I go read this book. Yeah. Oh, God, it's so beautiful being here with you. It's so beautiful. Oh, but what a gift that is that these things exist. Yeah. And ultimately, I would say you wrote that book. You know, what <laughs> I mean? you wrote it for yourself. Yeah. This whole thing is this benevolent booby trap and you do trip and you don't like tripping but then you fall into your self. Yeah. The the one that you always say that I love is uh, the cup is already broken. Yeah. Buddhism. That's a Buddhism I don't know why quote. more... And you know what else the Buddhists say? No self, no problem. Oh, no so self, my, no problem. I love that. My big thing right now is you don't have a life. You are life. Yeah. 
and we stretch our memories like silly putty. We hold the, all our past in a big bag like Santa Claus' a sack of toys and we show our wares, we show our posters and we yeah. have our memories and, and we're constantly bringing up the past as if we have a life. It's just this, it's just this and eventually it disperses. In the same way that your thoughts are made of your consciousness, the thought of an orange fades in with your eyes closed and then it disappears. Yeah. But if you watch that carefully, it doesn't actually disappear. It's replaced with the spacious, neutral, self-aware field that was that preceded it yeah. and is after it. Why is that interesting? Because I think we're thoughts in the mind of God. Yeah. We show, you, can, you don't have to say God if you don't like that, but we're just thoughts in consciousness. We, we appear and we seem to disappear. You're like Jim Carrey without all the hit movies. <laughs> I'm Jim Carrey without the leisure of hundreds of millions of dollars. You're like Jim Carrey with one half hour special. This is what I've been waiting for. I didn't like beating up on you the whole first hour. It was just me punching a dog. Nobody, nobody likes that. This is how it should be. Oh, God. I've had this conversation recently on a podcast with Joe Firestone and uh, Gary Goldman, which is what is our level of friendship? You and me? Yeah. 10 out of 10. I think so. Are you? I hope I'd be heartbroken if you were like, eh, you're a B minus. No, no. I would say like 10 out of 10, 11 we, out of 10. We talk. We do go weeks without talking, but we talk most of the time. If I'm laughing on the phone, Val knows I'm talking to you. Oh, there's only. I love that. I have to write down. I have a list in my phone where I write down my friends. Yeah. You're not on that list. Here's why. I don't have to write you down. It sounded like a burn. Yeah. But like, there's some people that I'm just like, who do I, who do I call? Yeah. And I, I don't do that with you. I, I call you when I have a problem. I call you when there's something good. I call you when I need help. Yeah. We call each other when we need help. One way to look at it is it is a little bit of reparenting. It's, it, it's not that we're dads to each other, but there's this very beautiful male vulnerable love that's peppered with strength. Like you'll say, I'll never forget. I'm at the cellar. I do this Michael Jackson joke. It's never made a special. I always cut it. I filmed it. Okay, let's not exaggerate twice, but that's five years apart. Yeah. And I always cut it. You said it was the best Michael Jackson joke you had ever heard. And then you also said, I don't like the way you get into it. Mm. And I was like, that's a friend. Yeah. That's What's the joke? Do you remember? Of course. The way I got into it was <laughs> whenever I get stoned, I don't know why, but I want to see something from the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and you were like, that's fine. But the joke was, there was this interview with Barbara Walters. This is real. Yeah. And she says to Michael Jackson, Michael, how do you feel when you see the headline, Wacko Jacko? Yeah. How does that make you feel? And Michael Jackson says, 100% real. He goes, I don't like it. It's Jack's son. <laughs> and I get real worked up. I go, he's mad at the Jacko part. <laughs> I'm like, it's wacko. Wacko. Wacko is the insult. We shortened we shortened Jackson to make it rhyme with wacko. This is so funny. Here's the last part. I go, if the word for wacko was waxen, we would have called you waxen Jackson. You're getting mad at the wrong part. That would be like if we called you kid fucking Mike and you're like, it's Michael! <laughs> Okay, this joke's great. This joke's great, and I do think that the way you get into it's wrong. Yeah, but I, you just proved I don't even need that. I can you don't just need say it. I was you can go straight interview. into it. I was watching this interview in the '90s with blah blah blah. Yeah, you just go straight into it. I just put it in the in a group of jokes about the theme of people get hung up on the wrong things. Yeah, like family I saw an guy. interview with Michael Jackson. Yeah, Barbara Walters goes. What, what do you think of this wacko Jacko? And he goes, really? my name's not Jacko, it's Jackson. It's like, yeah. you're missing the point, my friend. <laughs> and then you go straight into your joke, which is much better than what I'm saying. But like, I feel like you could come up with four or five of those where people are really missing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. You cluster it. It's like you can't sell four avocados at Whole Foods unless you put them in a bag. Yeah. <laughs> is there any other... Is there yeah, any I have other? lots of jokes. Yeah, Selfishly. I was in Mexico and I got bit by a scorpion. 
in my bed. Oh, gosh. Here's the first dumb joke. I don't like this one, but I go, which was confusing because I did ask for a wake-up call. <laughs> okay, it's okay. It's okay. Um, this was our favorite part of the story in the retelling. It was like early in the morning. It was still dark. Okay. I feel something. Oh, gosh. I, it, it didn't really hurt. It felt yeah. like sandpaper was on my skin, so I'm like rolling around. I lift the sheets up. There's a dead little translucent yellowish scorpion dead. Oh, gosh. I know. But I get out of the bed. And I, I'm like, it bit me three or four times. And I thought, this isn't writing. This is what I thought. I can't trust myself to be around anymore. So I have to wake up Val. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I'm going to be here. Like, I don't know if I'm going to, like, collapse yeah. or go into shock. So I woke up Val. Yeah. And she laughed because I was like, Val, not panic, but deep. Yeah. Valerie. And she's like, oh. it's like, I've been bitten by a scorpion. <laughs> and then Val's so sweet, she gets on the phone. She calls the front desk. And she's like, hi, yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, no, we're good. We're good. Um, one of us has been bitten by a scorpion. <laughs> uh, yeah, the doctor. Yeah, that would be great if you could send a doctor. I go out on the balcony. I elevate my foot. Okay. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm like sending the yes. venom. Yes. Towards me? I don't know what to do. Yes, yes. I'm actually surprisingly calm. So the doctor comes. Val's like, how often does this happen? And he goes, not much. He goes, once or twice a month. Yeah. You're saying every two weeks someone's, a guest is attacked by a scorpion? Yeah. He has it. He goes, I go, this is all real. I go, how long before we know if I'm allergic, like before yeah. I start having a reaction. He goes, no allergy. He, it's in Mexico, so there's a language factor. He goes, yeah. no allergy. Um, 24 hours, you'll be dead. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's great. That's no allergy. Where I'm, no that's allergy. where I'm in. Okay. So he goes, don't worry, I have an anti-venom. He actually, I was helping him with his English. He was going, uh, venom, <laughs> venom. I'm like, venomous? Yeah. Venomous? Yeah. See, see, venomous. <laughs> and I'm like, why is this... Fucking Duolingo right now. I might be dying. <laughs> and he he has the anti venom yeah. in the shot. Okay. And he keeps gesturing. Holy cow! So it's serious. I didn't. You needed an anti venom shot on stage. I wouldn't say this, but I didn't get the feeling it was serious. Nobody seemed that worried. Okay. They were speaking very calmly in Spanish. Right. Like, pequeño, pequeño. <laughs> like that sort of thing. <clears throat> right. Right. But he has the anti venom, and he and this is real. He keeps gesturing with it with the shot hand over the balcony. You know, he's got okay. the cure and he's yeah, like, yeah. oh, no, I have mucho problema. And he's kind of like, and I'm like, could you bring that? <laughs> like, if you drop that. Yeah. Big problem. Uh, let me see what else I got. Oh, that's great, though. Wait, are you done with that story? Let me see. Because that's a, I think that's really strong. I actually think that the, the key thing with that story is figuring out what it's, what it means to you. Like what are you? What are you? What are your actual emotions? Well, I feel like you're kind of flippantly saying like, "Oh, I guess I might be dead in two minutes," but it's like, what does it actually feel like? I have a couple thoughts. And on maybe, that. maybe, maybe the, the act I, out. Maybe the act out of that. For sure, I think that's that's gold. That's great. That's gold, Jerry. <laughs> it was kind of disappointing, and that's true. I wanted an experience. I wanted to trip. What's I wanted to be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. okay, you and Ringo Starr are gonna help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, you wanted it to have some kind of twist. Yeah. Some psycho, psych, psychiatric twist. Um, and then I knew my, this is real. Real. Yeah. I knew my phone was listening to all of this because after they left, my phone showed me ads for Mortal Kombat. That's not a joke. Well, I don't even get it. If you were hip, you would. There's a character in Mortal Kombat named Scorpion. Oh, I like that. So in my feed was an ad and it was the fighter Scorpion. The the cheesy, I, I, <clears throat> the cheesy gonna, way to do it, it would you go, would you have gotten this? I'm I'm a kid from the '90s, so I'm afraid that if this is how I die, the last thing I'm gonna think is Scorpion wins. <laughs> so that's funny. That part's funny to me, and I also think wait wait, like, wait. fatality. <laughs> there you go. So I think like you like that better. Well, hold on. I actually think this is kind of a step out discussion point about jokes in general, which is like JIG. Well, I just think like, yeah, J.I.G. Um, <laughs> where it's like, you got to account for sometimes people don't know what the reference you're saying is. Yeah. And so you might as well overcompensate. And say Scorpion and say, wins. 
well, yeah, or say Mortal Kombat joke and then go and then go. Uh, and just so you know, there's a character named Scorpion. If you don't, if you don't know Mortal Kombat, and then do the Scorpion wins joke because I'm uh, laughing at Scorpion wins, yeah. and I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm laughing at it because you just explained to me what it is. Like, there's so many jokes where it's like all you have to do is actually explain to people what it is, and then they'll go with you for the joke. So both. I got yeah. ads for Mortal Kombat. I'm a '90s kid. Yeah, it's funny. I'll, I'll remember the beats. I got a good mind for well, that. We're recording this, you know. I'm not going to listen. <laughs> we're filming and recording? 100% JK. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I, that feels like I have a bit. Can I do this other one? That yeah, I yeah, of course. Yeah, I have more jokes too. Um, This one I, I think it will relate to because we're, we're, we also have one child. And this is delicate because would, it would kill me if I thought that Leela would hear this joke and think that because she's like a lot that we decided yeah. to not have another kid. But it was more, this is just the truth. When we had one, we were like, this feels right. I'm not yeah. saying we might not have, yeah, yeah. we might have another one at some point if, if that happens. But so now I'm speaking to that child in yeah. case they see this. See, it's a tricky subject. Um, but we're a one child family. And, uh, you know, the triangle is the strongest shape found in nature. Uh, and, you know, when it's tough with Leela, my wife and I always joke like, what if there was another one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? So, and we talk about getting a vasectomy. And then I go on the road and I'm away from my family for a couple of days. And I'm like, I can't. I love Leela so much. It's life. It's beautiful. And then I come home for four hours and I'm like, I have a butter knife. I'm going to do it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's kind of dark. But this is the part <laughs> that I feel more sure about. Why do men resist? I think it's because... The for vasectomy. Real, why do men resist a vasectomy? I think it's because... This is in my own mind. We think there is a chance it might come down to just you and one woman and everyone's dead and it's up to you to repopulate <laughs> the, the planet. Of so it's going to be me and Scarlett Johansson and that's egg on my face. Oh, God. That I'm like, whoops-a-doodle. <clears throat> it's tricky saying Scarlett because that's a real person, but, you know, like a, the most beautiful woman in the world. I almost would go to the heart of the issue. The issue which is we're going to have one because we're so tired you think that's the thing? yeah to me that's like the funny confession of it it's sort of like it's sort of like dig into that like like You're like a therapist i find it significant <laughs> that you said it was difficult yeah well because i think that therein you go back to what's the con what's the confession what's the truth what's your secret and it's like that's the pain that the audience members are feeling of like Oh my God, you don't know the half of it. We have three right. kids. Right. It's exhausting. Well, we know those families that have five kids and they look like zombies. And yeah. I'm like, what were you doing? Can I run another joke, which is, I thought you'd think this is funny, which is because you and I, I think, have similar <laughs> thoughts about Yeah. How our, did our I dads. not do a show called Thank God for Jokes? <laughs> like, how did you <laughs> scoop me? <laughs> what? Well, I have this, I've had this joke lately where like, when I was a kid, like my dad would feel underappreciated. Oh, you've told me this. One. And then he would go like, just send the check. Like that that's all we want from him is money. The check. You know, just send the check. Just send the check. And I and I remember thinking, like, Dad's crazy. Yeah. And now I'm like, he had a good point about the check. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> just send the check. Yeah, no, that see what you're you're right on the money. I think I said this to you last time. Men are absurd. We set it up. Our egos are so fragile. I'm not just saying this. Yeah. They're so fragile that we want to be the breadwinner, some of us. But I, I'll say I do. Yeah. I want to pay for the dinner. I want to do I, yeah. I'll, I'll get the house. And then we resent them I'll get for the house. I'll get the house. <laughs> Then we end up resenting people for doing what we said we wanted right. to do. Then we're like, now I got to buy the house. It's oh my like, God, that's so you funny. said you wanted to buy the house. Then we become Bill Burr. Now I got to get the house. Yeah. Now I got to get the house. Why I got to get the house? No, it's a nice house. Oh, you like the house? Oh, you, you like, like the, the house? house? Get the fuck out of here. Oh, my God. No, but no. I think there's, so what I'm saying is leaning into the pain and the loneliness yeah. of like, what did I do? Yeah. You inherited a thought system of masculinity yeah. that you bought into because sometimes it makes you feel like a big shot. And then you realize 
you're the president. Yeah. And you want to eat a sandwich, but they need you in the situation room. And it's like, you ran for president. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that that's at the heart of of kind of what I'm, my next hour I'm trying to understand. Like I like the fundamental thing of, of Please Stop the Ride, which is my next door, is about how I look at my daughter and all of her experiences. And I think, oh, when I was her age, I looked at my own parents and I thought, oh, they know what they're doing yeah and now i'm 45 and i'm the i'm that person i'm like oh i don't know anything yeah and i'm trying to expound on that yeah i think it's funny that we get give it such a hard time that kids have to learn that santa claus isn't real it's like <laughs> yes none of it was real oh my god in fact when i go to that's Disney, a good point and right? that's a good joke none of it was real. that's yours that's in I'll take, that's in this. I'll take that but it's your observation it's yeah. just the image it gave me because when i go to disneyland with lilo I do the impression of an Indiana Jones style dad because it's comforting to her. There's a certain type of masculinity. Yes. Women have this as well. Yes. That's comforting. I go, we're going to go on pirates. We're going to go on whatever. Yeah. Then we're going to get lunch. Then we're going to leave. Yeah. And that's fucking dad. Fucking knife. Yeah. It's great. You know what I mean? Clean. Yeah. And I do that because if you go, what do you want to do? She'll have a panic attack. I go, go on my shoulders. Dad's driving. Right. Sleep in the back seat. I got you. The truth is, I'm doing my best, but I'm being Santa Claus. I'm assuming an avatar. Right. Of dad. Yeah. So dad doesn't exist. Santa Claus doesn't exist. You go deep enough, none of it exists, Mikey. Right. Jim Carrey, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Without the movies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been in some pieces of shit. I was in Don't Think Twice. <laughs> <laughs> Barely speaking role. Yeah. Um, the uh... Get to laugh. <laughs> Get to laugh. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We, uh, you, you play, you in Don't Think Twice, you, you play Pete Holmes coming out of an SNL audition and you're doing a Ray Romano impersonation and and i heard a story where phil rosenthal showed the movie don't think twice and at his house and ray romano was there and that part came up and ray goes oh come on it's great <laughs> well you know when i shot the sketch romano duets where i'm singing with him yeah we were rolling on my part so i had my hair blacked out i'm wearing the open flannel shirt just like him and i'm like i can feel it coming <laughs> in the air tonight and he walks in while i'm shooting it's in a big sound stage it's dark and i just hear him go my poor wife oh my god that's so funny if that's what i sound like my poor wife that's what i it's funny you should say that my poor wife my poor wife that's that and that's that's part of what i've been trying to zero in on in my new hour is like what is the other people That's the in my genius. lives perception of me like what yeah. hell it is to have to be married to me and have me as your dad what a nightmare yeah and it's like i'm if i i feel like in my next hour if i can key in on that in a way that makes people laugh like i had one recently where i was like i was like <laughs> sometimes jenny will point out that like i'm narrating our marriage but like we don't really need that can we turn the DVD commentary off? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's like, so I'll be like washing the dishes. And I'll be like, so I'm washing the dishes. And I'm going to grab some ice cream for your parents coming over later. And then I'm going to grab the, get the hair out of the drain from the thing. And she'll be like, we don't need this. Yeah. You know? And that's when Mike realized he had to pick up his parents. <laughs> he got the clog out of the drain. So we finished with working out for a cause. Is there a nonprofit that you think does a great job? And we'll contribute to them and link to them in the show notes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Homeboy Industries. What's my, Homeboy Industries? My man. My dear friend. Father Greg Boyle runs the world's largest gang rehabilitation center in Los Angeles. Uh, but it's, I believe it's nationwide. They have other ones. And uh, they get people with criminal records, uh, jobs, job training. That is a phenomenal idea, and uh, it's homeboyindustries.org. I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, I will contribute to them. I'll link to them in the show notes, and uh, they that's have fantastic. Like free therapy, anger management, counseling. They give them jobs. They also have free tattoo removal, free. Like wow. the best tattoo people in the world donate their time. So it's an incredible place. Homeboy Industries. Pete Holmes, I love you. I love your special. Thanks, I, man. I, yeah. I will keep recommending it. 
please, you know, can I just say this? Yeah. You want to talk about honesty? Netflix either buys a special or they lease it. Okay. Mine is leased. So okay. if people don't watch it, yeah. it's going to be gone. Oh, wow. So I'm like, please, <laughs> please spare me this the so much inside info. It's so inside <laughs> and it's just so raw. I'm like, if this, it gets one year. <laughs> And if it drops off, it's because we didn't promote it and people didn't find it or whatever. But I'm like trying, I'm shouting it from the rooftops, but it's not a zero sum game. It's like, if we don't get people to watch yeah. what is my favorite special yeah. that I work the hardest on yeah. and I like the most, it will drop I'm gonna off. I'm going to cut you off there. Um, Pete Holmes, everybody, check it out. It's on Netflix. We're like, we're on local radio. I'm we're actually, the, my producer is saying we have to go. I'm sorry, uh, Pete. We're going to get, we're going to cut you out there. It's raining in Santa Fe. We have to, <laughs> there's breaking news. We're, we're, I'm sorry. We're, we're going to cut it. We're going to, we're going to throw to uh, traffic. Billy Bean on traffic. <laughs> <laughs>